Hello, YouTubers and Facebook friends, and also to my YouTube channel subscribers. Thank you for subscribing. That's uh, when I started seeing all that. I was like, "Why are people subscribing? To, what are they subscribing to?" Well, to my channel. So, I guess uh, I'm having a nice little following developing. So, hello to all of you as well. Anyways, uh, it's been a couple weeks. Uh, my brother was in town visiting for about eight or nine days or so, and that was a, it was a nice visit. Um, went up and, uh, went up to Montgomery, had a nice big family get together and dinner because, you know, my entire family's here. My daughter, uh, Deborah lives up in Montgomery, uh, which is about 45 miles north of us here in Troy. And, um, uh, we had a nice big dinner. It was cool. Um, and, uh, with her, with her, her and her husband, Patrick, uh, graciously hosting, it was a very nice dinner uh, with all of us, and our daughter Annika was there with her uh, fiance Angel and uh, our son Shiloh. Of course, it was it was a nice to get get together with everybody, uh, and of course, you know Helen and myself were there and present as well. And food, drinks, um, laughs. It was fun. It was cool. Uh, anyways, uh, the visit was great. Uh, me and my brother got to do some jamming. He got to see what I do here at Three Frogs and uh, um, in Brundage and in Troy. So it was uh, it was a nice visit, and uh, look forward to him coming out again for. Uh, I believe he's going to try to make it out for Hanukkah. Uh, I'm going to try to make it back to California before then, maybe in October. Um, all just depends, you know. Everything always depends. So schedules. And, all that good stuff, but, um, good visit, and I look forward to seeing, uh, him, and, uh, also I'm having some great people come out and visit, uh, my buddy Kevin Platt, uh, who was road manager for Deliverance for quite a while, um, he's coming out for a visit next, uh, next month, I believe, in the month of July, so that'll be cool, nice to see him, um, Kevin's, pretty much family. He's not, we don't see him as like just a, a good friend, you know, of the family. We, we see him as like, you know, he's like our cousin or even a brother to me. You know, he's just really, really, he's a good bro. And, uh, so we, we, uh, we were talking about that too. Me and my brother Chaz, uh, you know, just, you know, Kevin is just, he's family to us. He's not just a friend. So it'll be nice to see him. Um, and then, uh, hopefully sometime in the summer too, Jeff Seba is going to be visiting here at uh, Three Frog Studios in Brundage. Uh, we're going to commence uh, working on a new Jupiter 6 record. So, uh, lots of stuff. But I opened up my Facebook page and there was a zillion messages. My gosh, I, I just, I hadn't really touched it. And, and uh, wow, there were a lot. Um, I was going on there specifically to look uh, for um, my contact over at uh, the awesome pick company, um, that, um, sinister, uh, cause we we're in contact about maybe doing, uh, a, a deliverance and Jupiter six pick. So, uh, I'll keep you guys posted on that, but lots of, lots of messages, lots of, um, emails. So, uh, I'll try to get to, there was a bulk in there and I don't know if there was just a nostalgia thing going on. So I thought I'd run through a bunch of them and rather than try to answer them I'll try to answer them here that's what that's the whole purpose of my doing a video blog um, but uh, the, the big one was is about the Wikipedia page so I decided to pull the Wikipedia page up here and uh, boy there's some funny stuff on here uh, so, some of it true some of it kind of true some of it not so true um, but the biggest thing, uh, I, I do have to say the references to Queen's Reich section, whoever did this, uh, man knows music and knows it really well, at least knows it well enough to see that, uh, uh how much the Reich was an influence to me, especially in the early years of, uh, of deliverance. Um, and, uh, you know, this whole Jimmy has never been bashful about honoring, uh, what does it say? Other, honoring other musicians who have influenced him greatly. Well, th that he's got right. I, I'm not bashful about it at all. Uh, Pablo, Pablo Picasso said, you know, uh, good artists, uh, uh, what is it? What is the quote? Good artists steal 
uh, or no good artists are influenced, but great artists steal. So yeah, well, you know, I kind of, uh, I kind of like that quote <laughs> goes to me anyway. Um, uh, but anyway, so a lot of this stuff on here is uh, pretty funny, but all those references to the Queensryche tracks uh, do crack me up. They're they're pretty hilarious. Some of them are a little far fetched. Eh, maybe they are, maybe they're not. I don't know. Uh, influences always come through, and um, but the members list that was the, I, I I mean I read through maybe sixteen seventeen emails that came in over the past two three weeks or three to four weeks about, you know, were there really that many members in um, <laughs> Deliverance? So I thought I would kind of uh, try to quickly summarize because some of this stuff is 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 not accurate at all. And uh, so I kind of want to go through that. Um, first of all, I'll say what was formed, what wasn't formed, who was in the band and who wasn't in the band. So uh, Deliverance started 1985. Uh, it started myself and uh, a bass player named Alan Bostwick, who was a family friend, a longtime family friend, who played with my brother's band, Open Door, which was a Christian band, their, their first Christian rock band that they did back in 1980. Um, prior to that, though, in the 70s, they were in a band called Middle Earth together. Uh, now, now, Bostwick played with my brother here and there, uh, but he was a family friend, and... Um, when they started doing Open Door, I was maybe 11 years old, 10, 11 years old, and he'd heard me playing guitar and kept his eye on me. So by 1984, 1985, he and I started jamming. And um, after going through a couple of different guitar players and drummers and some different people, um, and this was before we were actually Deliverance. Uh, what became Deliverance was Chris Hyde, uh, Alan Bostwick, and a guitar player that we had acquired named uh, Rick Hawksinger. And we played our first show as the band Deliverance uh, with the four of us. Then we disbanded. Uh, not fully disbanded, but Alan went his own way. Um, I have no idea. Wife hunting in the Philippines or something. <laughs> Alan's a good bro. In fact, I spent a lot of time with him out in California this last uh, couple of years that I was there. It was nice uh, to see that we were only like 20 minutes apart from each other. So I got to spend some time, uh, quality time with Alan after many years of not seeing him. Um, but uh, so I, I'm kidding with, with that stuff. But, uh, you know, Alan did go his own way. And Rick, Rick Hawksinger, the same thing. He got got himself into some trouble, and uh, he had to quit the band. So we went on and found a bass player. And this, this, at this point, this is around September of uh, of '85, and we acquired Manny Morales. Found Manny Morales, uh, just unbelievable bass player, and he uh, joined the crew. Uh, and then with Rick Hoxinger, actually, at that time when we played a show. Uh, or no, no, this was after Rick Hoxinger and Alan Bostwick were gone. Then uh, we, we acquired the uh, former Holy Soldier guitar player, pre-Vengeance rising guitar player, Larry Farkas. And uh, we played with, with uh, Larry and Manny and Chris Hyde and myself. And so we went out and played a couple of shows. And um, then again just kind of disbanded. Um, me and my brother spent uh, a time out at uh, Jimmy Swagger Bible College in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. It was my first visit here to the South. And um, after that, um, we um, we came back and I called Chris, found out, hey, you know, do you, do you want to do deliverance? I mean, are we going to keep doing this? And Chris was like, oh, yeah, yeah. In fact, me and Larry are jamming right now. Uh, prior to this, I do have to tell this story because it is kind of funny. Uh, when it was Alan, Chris, and Rick, um, or, or prior to Rick Hoxinger being in the band, and I know this is starting to get a little convoluted, so the page isn't kind of far that that far fetched. But I'm trying to start the root of it and show you where it went from there. Um, Prior to Rick joining, we were looking for guitar players. So this guy shows up at my house, at my parents' house. Uh, I'm eating lunch, and and he says, "Oh, I'm here. I'm auditioning for the band, you know." And I'm like, "Yeah, okay. What's your name?" And he's like, "I'm. Oh, my name's Brian." 
I'm like, oh, well, Brian, I'll, I'll open up the garage door. You go ahead and load in your gear, and I'll be out there in a few minutes. I'm going to finish up my sandwich or whatever. And I'm watching through the, you know, the screen door, and he starts loading in, and he's bringing in these Toa speakers. And I'm like, what are those? Are PA speakers? That's kind of weird. And then he brings a PA head. I'm like, so I finish up my sandwich. I run out there, and I'm like, hey, so uh, th this is your guitar rig. You play guitar through a PA. And he says, what are you talking about? And I'm like well, you are a guitar player. And he's like, no, I'm a singer. Like, and he's like, I, I go, well, we don't need a singer. We need a guitar player. What do you, what do you, what do you mean? And he's like, I go, who told you to come here and audition for vocals? And he said, Chris Hyde. And right then Chris Hyde pulls up, you know? <laughs> and so Chris and I and brought, and Alan have words. Cause I guess what it was is Chris and Alan had had words with each other saying, you know, uh, yeah, we got to get a singer cause Jimmy can't sing. And, um, I had words with them and told them, you know, like it or not, whether I sing like Mickey Mouse or, you know, or Kermit the Frog or whatever, I, it's my band. I'm, I'm the singer, whether you like it or not. And, and, you know, Brian felt really uncomfortable and, and we parted ways, but we parted as friends and, and we exchanged numbers and he gave me his pager number and, um, you know, we, we stayed in touch. So that said, I come back from Jimmy Swaggart land all the, you know, months later, you know, now we're in 1986 and, uh, you know, Chris is jamming with Larry Farkas and Brian Carilla. And so, uh, Chris says, well, come on, bring your gear down and, and, and here's the address. It's a place called Deacon dog studios. And it was out in signal Hill. So I go out there, uh, I'm the first to pull up, which is amazing. Cause I'm late for everything. Uh, I'm the first to pull up. Nobody's there. Uh, then another truck pulls up and it's Manny Morales. I'm like, Oh my God, Manny. And he's got his base rig and everything. And he's like, yeah, Chris called me. And I'm like, Oh, cool. So deliverance is getting back together. This is awesome. Then who pulls up is, uh, this little VW rabbit and, and it's Brian and Larry Farkas. And they're shocked. I mean, there's first it's hugs and hey, how's it going? Blah blah blah. You know, and they're like, so. And now all of a sudden, the hugs and the the greeting turns into this kind of curious, you know, like confused look. You know, like, well, what are you guys doing here? And I'm like, well, Chris invited us because you know, Deliverance is getting back together. And they're like, what? And right then, Chris pulls up, and they all three go into the studio, and they have words. I'm sitting out in in, in the in the parking lot. And, uh, you know, I, I mean, I feel kind of bad at what's going on. And, and then Manny's like, you know, I'm in a band that's getting ready to take off and we're, you know, we're, we're, we're getting signed. Um, uh, so I'm going to take off. I don't need this drama. I'm like, okay, well, and we exchange numbers and that was kind of it for Manny. Manny takes off. So I decide to sneak a quick cigarette before anybody can catch me. <laughs> and then the door opens to the studio and, you know, out comes Brian, Chris, and, and, and Larry. And they said, where's Manny? And I said, oh, he left. He bailed, man. And I go, in fact, I, I'm, I think I'm going to bail too, guys. I, you know, it's kind of weird. And obviously Larry and Brian weren't expecting us. And Larry's just kind of like him hawing around and goes, well, dude, you brought your gear. You know, just go ahead and unload and let's jam. You know, it's just, let's just jam. So we went in there and we just played and they were doing some basic blues with each other. That's what they were doing. And I love blues. So I was playing and Larry's just a beast you know, on the guitar. And, and, um, we decided to play a couple of deliverance tunes. And so we played a couple of deliverance songs and, and it just felt so good. And, and for those songs, Brian didn't do anything. Brian wasn't singing. And we just looked at each other and it's like, man, guys, this feels right. It just feels right. And, Brian says, well, I used to play band or, or play, used to play bass in a band out in Canada. Um, so I, I, I could play bass. And Larry's like, well, you know, I, I guess just everybody hated my voice at that time. Um, because Larry's like, well, the songs I write, Brian sings on. And I was just like, um, okay, I, I mean, Kiss had Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley and Ace Frehley. They all sang songs, so I guess that's kind of no big deal. I didn't like it. Didn't like the idea of not being able to sing all the songs, but uh, it was kind of Larry's, you know, thing. And 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 uh, you got to see it from my perspective. At this point, now I'm 16, and and 
I, you know, all these guys are older than me. They're all five, six years older than me. So, um, I just wanted to jam and I just wanted to play. So, you know, we got together and we started working on stuff and, uh, the, the songs were sounding good. The, the set was sounding tight. Um, Brian sang two songs. Um, uh, I think a song called Everlasting Love and something, something, the other one was The King or I can't remember, bitchin' song, really heavy, real cool, very Larry Farkas. Uh, it reminded me of The Ultimate Sin from Ozzy. It was just awesome. Anyways, um, so we, so we uh, go and play our first show as deliverance and uh it was a cool show and and um brian had his two songs and i sang the rest of the set and uh and we had keyboards and brian would play keyboards on on psalm 23 and it, it was just it was a cool show it was a really neat little presentation and we stayed together we played and we ended up playing the, some club called the oasis a bunch of times then we played the whiskey a go-go um and the Troubadour, uh, and those were great shows, and it was a lot of fun, and things were happening, but at this time, uh, Larry was being courted uh, by, you know, because at that time, it was a different influx of, of what was happening in the scene, and there was a lot of joining sides, as with anything, I mean, Christianity, uh, clubs, cliques, anything, I mean, it just is what it is, and um, you know, in Christianity, there, you know, the 1700 plus sects that all, you know, sects of Christianity that all, you know, pretty much dispel one another. Um, at that time, you know, the, the big argument was whether, you know, Christian heavy metal was legitimate or not. So, um, the sanctuary movement was taking, you know, all the refugees of, uh, and, uh, that were being, you know, lambasted out of uh, their churches, um, and building you know, their rock and roll church, as it were. And, uh, you know, Chris and I just, you know, we were Pentecostal boys. We weren't going to have anything to do with that, you know. So, <laughs> and I liked Bob. Me and Bob were, t we're still friends with Bob. Bob, I love, love Bob Beeman. Uh, but at that time, we just weren't wanting to stand or support, you know, Deliverance to be a sanctuary band, as it were. So, um, Larry ended up leaving. Uh, deliverance and uh, and it stayed with uh, with uh, me Brian and Chris and so me Brian and Chris started the endless look for a guitar player so first guy on the list so I'm gonna try to rush through this quick because it's we're at 17 minutes and I really don't want to probably go past 25 so uh, but we're gonna need that much just to kind of go through it that was the beginning history just to kind of show you the, the the formulation of the band because from this point on, it kind of was a list of endless guitar players. So we'll go through this now. Um, first guy to, to play with us. Uh, it was my fault. I, I, I totally took the guy without hearing him uh, because he was just nice. Um, his name was Mike Van Ash. And he was really, really cool. He had a lot of cool gear. And, and I'm sure he could play other styles of music really well, but he couldn't play all the intricate picking um, with what was going on with Deliverance at the time, especially where we were going thrash metal-wise. And, um, <laughs> yeah, Chris and Brian just weren't happy with Mike at all. And um, so I think he played, like, one or two shows with us, maybe. Maybe. took he paid for, like, 8 by 10s to be taken of us and paid a guy to, to draw a logo for us. And, and, I mean, it was... He was really into being part of the band. But, and, uh, but after I heard his playing, I was just like, yeah, this guy doesn't belong, but how, you know, how do we get rid of him? I really like him. He's sweet. And, and he was mixed up with the Sanctuary group. So, you know, I didn't want us to get a bad rep with Sanctuary. So, um... But, yeah, it ended up, we just asked him to leave, and people started hating on us, and it turned into this kind of bad scene. And these other guys, uh, the, there was a guy I'd made friends with, his name was Marcus Cologne. So, well, me and Marcus, Marcus ran a magazine called Black and White um, Magazine uh, or, uh, that was put on by an organization called Long Hairs for Christ. So, uh, yeah, dumb name. But anyway, so me and Marcus just hit it off as friends, and so we we joined forces and we started playing. Now Marcus could play. Marcus was an incredibly tight rhythm player. Um, mashed me note for note, 
uh, on everything. I mean, everything I threw at him, he was just right there with him. He was just, he was good. Uh, his solos left a lot to be desired, and I remember that really bothered Chris and Brian. <laughs> and, and I, now you got to understand, Chris and Brian were so loyal to me, and and I loved both of them, and and as, especially Brian. Me and Brian were just like this, you know, and um, <laughs> and just and, and then Marcus was a little difficult to deal with. He was just very. Uh, it was what we used to call him the Puerto Rican Jew, you know, just very anal, very, uh, very uh, dominating personality. But uh, the guys just, you know, had a hard time dealing with him. And, and the only problem I had was he wasn't a ripping solo player. I wanted somebody who just ripped. And um, so that was it for his stay. And then we went three piece for a while. And then when we went three piece, um, we played a few shows, but again, I wasn't very confident in my solo playing. And uh, we had one show. I just have to say it was really, really funny. Don from Neon Cross sat in uh, the front row with his wireless uh, unit hooked to his guitar. And Brian would just call out the keys of, you know, what solo, you know, E, you know, A, you know. <laughs> and he would just play the solo and then Brian would give him the eye sign to stop. It was hilarious, you know, because I just wasn't very confident in my solo playing uh, at that time. And, uh, well, anyway, so Marcus now gone. Uh, now we got a bunch of people hating us on every side. Long hairs for Christ. People hate us. Uh, Sanctuary hates us. Uh, yeah, but their, their hate was starting to dispel, which was nice. Um, and then we were asked to do the California metal record. And, uh, we came in as a substitute for vengeance because the Elefante boys just didn't want to work with vengeance because they didn't like their music. Um, so, we came in and uh we were a three piece at the time um and uh we found glenn rogers he was playing with a band called hero and uh glenn joined the forces with uh, deliverance and uh, we started and we played together for a good couple of years and and uh, glenn introduced us to um bill matoyer who produced you know our first Two records well our first record mixed weapons um but you know bill ended up producing a lot of groups uh, as a result of that relationship that um you know glenn rogers had forged um with the christian metal realm um not the forum posting board by the way but you know just the, the group of christian metal musicians at that time uh he ended up producing tourniquet he produced a bunch of other stuff i mean he's still doing stuff for, i mean like he mixed a uh, worldview for george and uh so and, and we have glenn rogers to thank for that for introducing and forging that network but glenn rogers joined uh right in the middle of the recording of the first album you know we, we go through all this hassle we record the first album uh right in the middle of it brian tells me you know, and Glenn's leaving, man. He doesn't want anybody to know, especially he doesn't want you to know because he knows you're going to be pissed and blah, 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 blah. And I was, and I went back, uh, uh, in fact, all over through all the songs and rewrote every little part because he didn't write a lot of it. Um, but there was some parts, significant parts of the first album that he had written, and I changed them. I rewrote them because I was so mad at him. Um, <laughs> and I, I mean, it's just the truth. The only song we had to leave on there because it was such a killer song, but Glenn wrote it was uh, temporary insanity. Uh, I only wrote the lyrics and even then I didn't write the lyrics. A girl named Shelly Robbins, I think wrote the lyrics. So, uh, or a part of the lyrics. I wrote some of them. She wrote some of them, but I forgot to give her credit. Nah, anyways, uh, <laughs> so Glenn was gone. Uh, then Roger Martinez, uh, reintroduced me to George Ochoa, which I, I'd met George a bunch of times since 1985. And, um, we were reintroduced. Uh, he loved what was going on. We, he joined forces with us. Um, so that's about right, right there. After George, then Mike Phillips came in. Um, now in between the whole George thing, uh, Chris left, Brian left, um, then Mike Grotto came in, and John Gonzalez came in from Recon. John, while being a very good metal drummer, did not fit Deliverance, especially where we were going as far as the very brutal, heavy stuff that was coming on. Uh, what a joke. This didn't work out. So he's gone. Kevin Lee enters. Um, 
who Jim Chaffin from the Crucified introduced us to. Um, then we did that. Um, then George is gone. Uh, Mike Phillip comes in. Uh, then Mike Grotto leaves. He's gone. Uh, we asked him to leave. Um, then <laughs> uh, Brian Carilla came back. Brian plays with us for a little bit. And then Brian leaves again. Not in bad terms, by the way. Uh, me and Brian are still bros. I mean, I, I love Brian. And he's still, anytime Jupiter 6 will do anything live, I want Brian to be a part of it, you know. Um, Brian's a good bro. Always will be. Um, but Manny enters now. So, but Mike Phillips leaves. And... Then we asked Kevin to leave. Uh, Kevin wants to come back. Or Kevin actually left. And then uh, <laughs> he asked to come back. And we said no. So now it's just, we, we acquired another guitar player named John Maddox. So now it's John Maddox, me, Man Morales. And we're recording a new album called Learn. And we hired John Knox from Whiteheart to play on that album and he just tore it up and he's just doing so great and then we hired a, a live crew to go on the road and uh, a kid named Steve Zacone was hired to play the tour with us and uh, so Steve Zacone on drums John Maddox on guitar and me and Manny uh, we came back from that tour, fired Stinky Steve, and uh, nothing against him, but he just never showered, uh, and he wasn't that great of a drummer. But So Steve went out, and then we started playing with a guy named Jeremy Moffat. <laughs> and Jeremy never played any shows with us, but he was rehearsing with us. Uh, Jeremy ended up being the lead singer for a band called The Blamed. So... Uh, and, and these are people that aren't even on the website, by the way. So, <laughs> um, then John left, uh, to go to Bible college. And so he was in a band called judgment. We brought the other guitar player from judgment and that Matt Winslow, and he came into the picture and we started recording. Um, well, we'd already recorded the river disturbance album at that point, And we recorded it with John Knox again. So it was me, Manny, Jonathan Maddox and John Knox. Um, but as soon as that record was done, we started preparing for the tour. John Maddox was gone. Knox never played with us live. Uh, so we hired Betrayal's old drummer, who was with Marcus Cologne, and me and Marcus had remained friends that entire time. Um, so his drummer, Jeff Mason, joined Deliverance. Um, so he was now was me, Jeff, Manny, and Matt. We did the Spring Fling tour together. Uh, and then we were going to go out and do the latter part, uh, the winter version of the spring fling tours, the winter fling tour. Um, this was all touring for river disturbance. Well, <clears throat> at that point, um, Matt just leaves a rehearsal and then disappears. He just I mean, leaves all his gear, whatever, you know, his parents won't let us talk to him. It was really, really, it was a strange, bizarre situation. Later come to find out his parents bought him a car to leave the band because they wanted him to uh, take over the family business, the running the pizza parlor there. So <laughs> it was just a bizarre situation. And, uh, and Matt just didn't know how to tell us. So like I said, he left all his gear at our, at, at our studio and it was just really weird, really weird. Um, anyway, so at that point, Marcus Cologne comes back to the fold and he joins Deliverance. Now, at this time, I'm writing all these crazy different types of riffing and everything else and stuff that required three and four guitars. So we hired, um, this kid from a band I was producing out in Hesperia. I can't remember the name of the band, but they were like a dream theater band. But this kid that played with them. Uh, he was like a, a young Larry Farkas, looked like a young Larry Farkas, played like a young Larry Farkas. He was just awesome. And his name was Eric Bradfield. So we took him on tour with us. And now it's Jeff Mason, Manny Morales, me, Eric Bradfield, and Marcus Cologne. Now, Eric's not in the band. He's just playing with us. 
Um, and then we recorded um, the Camelot and Smithereens record. Well, at this point, we were going to have a, a guitar player named Joey Rico play with us. Well, Joey was a phenomenal guitar player. I mean, really, really good player. Really good player. Um, but Joey just, he just didn't fit. He didn't fit what was going on uh, stylistically wise where what, what we were doing. He was just very LA metal scene. Uh, and I was doing, I was out of my head at that time, especially with the River album. So, uh, so Marcus officially joined, uh, during the Camelot Smithereens, uh, record. And then, um, so at that point it was Jeff, Manny, me, Marcus. So that was it. And then the band broke up and then that was the end of it. And I didn't see anybody for years. We reformed. It was basically just me and Manny. Um, we were going to hire a guitar player and hire a drummer. Well, we recorded the Assimilation record. Um, we had two awesome, wonderful studio musicians play with us. Um, they were in a band called Sanctified Sister at that time, or I think they're called Sista, or they were called Sista. I don't know. They don't even exist anymore. But um, Jim uh, Calvert and Justin D. Ty, these guys were just awesome. And they played with us on the Assimilation record. They kind of sniffed and understood uh, the vision of what I was wanting to do with that record and uh, didn't completely get done the way I wanted to, but it was it's still a good record. Um, but these guys weren't in Deliverance. They were just hired guns uh, to play on the Deliverance record, along with uh, my buddy David Gilbreth, who had been playing with Gerbil Symmetry. <sighs> All right, I'm running out of breath. Okay, so um, we were booked to play the Triumphant Return show for... Uh, for uh, Cornerstone, and they were going to record a live album in the whole shebang. Well, I was too prideful at that point to ask George Ochoa to play with us or Mike Phillips to play with us. Uh, I just, I, I don't know. It, long story short, I was just too too prideful in my head, and, and I knew Deliverance wasn't going to do anything at this point. We were just playing the show, and that was it. Um, but I, I, we ran out of time and we were told about this guitar player in St. Louis where we, we happened to be living at that time, uh, named Lael, Lael Clark. Uh, now I'll tell you what, not only did Lael have a really cool, crazy look, I mean, he just had a great look, great image and a heart of gold, man. This guy was just awesome. Now, Lael was a very good I mean, and I'm not like being gratuitous when I say this. He was a great, great guitar player. Very solid rhythm. Just solid rhythm player. Could play any of the old stuff, the new stuff. Had great feel, nice vibe. Um, but man, when it came to solos, he was awful. But I mean, he'd be the first to tell you. I mean, he, I remember him telling me, I'm not a solo player. I, I suck. And, and yeah, he does. He was absolutely horrible. Um, and he got it. Excuse me, kind of ruined the, the live album. I, I, mean, I listened to that album that album once, and I never listened to it again. And, and, and like I said, it's all in all in Lael's defense. You know, he said I'm not a solo player, and uh, I just I kind of feel bad about that. You know, um, but that was it. And then uh, from that point on, it was just more jamming. Um, I, I mean, Mike Phillips got back together. Uh, with Kevin Lee and recorded um, As Above, So Below. And this time we had a great bass player named Tim Kroniak. But again, we were just getting together, recording, going to play. Well, when we were recording the As Above album, uh, Kevin just started fizzling out um, during the recording. And so we had to bring somebody in to finish it. And we were suggested uh, through several channels of this guy named Mike Reed. And that's how I met Mr. Mike Reed. Mike Reed came into the picture and Mike Reed helped us finish the record. Well, he was like, oh, well, so are we gonna play shows and everything? I'm like, yeah, Deliverance wasn't really doing anything, but I am doing another project. And so Reed ended up joining Jupiter Six. So, and that's how me and Mike Reed um, started jamming. And he introduced me to Jeff Seba, who I'd already met a bunch of times since like 1989. And um, 
that's a whole other mess though. We won't get into the Jupiter six thing, but that's, but Reed was part of deliverance at that time. Um, I think we played a couple of shows then again, hiatus again. And, um, we came back to do the, um, hear what I say record not too long ago, about three years ago and hear what I say embodied, uh, the works of Mike Phillips. Once again, uh, I wanted to bring back Manny, uh, cause Manny's just such an amazing tasty bass player. And at the, um, suggestion of Mike Phillips, Jason Sherlock was available. Now, you know, of course you guys know Jason Sherlock from, uh, Horde and, uh, of course, Mortification. That's, that's how I initially met, met, uh, Jason. But, um, the, this, his drumming is, it's so frighteningly inhuman. It's just unbelievable. And, uh, we didn't bring him here. We, we, I sent him the tracks to Australia. He went out and tracked them there and sent back these tracks that were unbelievable. They were just ridiculous. Uh, like I said, you can't even believe a uh, human's playing it. And uh, Jason is a machine. He is so good. I mean, so, so good. And we were lucky to have him play on that album. Uh, but again, not a band, just a project, just putting it out, you know. Um, so that's kind of where and who has been part of the Deliverance Saga. Uh, so this list right here, Larry Farkas, Glenn Rogers, Jonathan Maddox, Matt Winslow, Marcus and Cologne, Eric Bradfield. Nope. He was never a member. Leo Clark. No, he wasn't really a member. Mike Phillips. Yes. Brian Carilla, Mike Grotto, Tim Kroniak. Yeah, he was a member. Uh, Manny Morales, Chris Hyde, John Gonzalez, Kevin Lee, John Knox. He was a studio guy. Ian Baird played one show with us, by the way, unbelievable drummer and unbelievable music producer. You guys should like check into his projects. Go on Facebook, Ian Baird, ridiculous guy. He's a very, very talented treasure uh, or talented gem out there. Mike Reed, yes. Uh, Jason Sherlock, studio guy. You know, we weren't a band, but he graced us with his ridiculous talent on, uh, on hear what I say, guy's a monster, he's a beast. Uh, but yeah, timeline, everything on here is totally wrong. David Gilbreth, he played some shows with us, because Fearful Symmetry wasn't doing anything, and I felt bad uh, that he didn't have anything to do. So that's why David played with us on the, you know, on, the, on I think on Assimilation and uh, did the, the Triumphant Return show with us live. Uh, John Christensen, that's of course Johnny Gonzalez. Uh, John Johnny Gonzalez, yes, he was in the band. Corn J. Scott. Nope, not a member. He played keyboards and backing vocals at some live shows, but he was not a member of the band. Eli Prinson, again, filled in in Norway when I couldn't make it out there because I couldn't get a passport at the time. Uh, but he was not a member of the band. Junior Reed, again, Junior Reed came out as, as an 11 year old and played no time with us. He wasn't a part of the band. So, um, Jim Calvert, studio musician. Exactly that. Uh, Justin Detai, you know, again, studio musician. Jesse Rivera. This bro, I really, I do, I would like to say, you know, and, and God bless him. Rest in peace, my brother. I know he's, um, you know, he, he passed away back in 06. But Jesse never played with us. I, I never even met Jesse. Um, he was... Um, I, apparently, I guess he was an acquaintance or a friend of Manny Morales, and Manny had told me about him and said, you know, if we ever need anybody to play, you know, it's this guy Jesse, and I think I talked to him, like, on the phone once, but he never played, he never played on anything, he never recorded anything with us, he never, I, I never even met him personally, so how he uh, ended up on this list, I don't know. Um, so... You heard some names today that that aren't on here, and I, I hope I set the record straight on the rest of these guys. Now, current members, uh, you were reading it absolutely correct. Jimmy Brown, George Ochoa, Victor Macias, Jim Chaffin. That is the current lineup. Um, we're going to continue to do shows. God willing, we're going to record a record, and um, 
let's just see what happens. So, um, but that is the history. Wow, 40 minutes. That is kind of embarrassing. <laughs> so, um, that it took 40 minutes to talk about all this. Uh, so many different members in this band. But that's where it all lies. Uh, I'll keep reading through the emails and I'll try to answer the questions. But ra rather than trying to type all that, I talked it, spoke it. So, there we go. Thank you so much, Jimmy Brown, signing off here at the Three Frog Studios here in Brundage, Alabama. Uh, like us on Facebook. Uh, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you guys soon. Wow, 40 minutes. Yeah, we'll have to, I don't, I, I don't know how to edit yet on video, so we'll, we'll have to figure that out one of these days. But otherwise, you get 40 minutes of my uh, blabbering away. So we'll take care, you take care, and uh, we'll see you at the next, uh, uh, the next installation, which I'm hoping is going to involve gear. So, because um, uh, I, I want to talk about some really cool gear that I just uh, got into. So uh, we'll see what happens. And uh, I've been asked also to sing um, and give tutorials and all sorts of stuff. I don't know about any of that, but. We'll see as we go. So thank you again. Uh, you guys have a wonderful day, a wonderful evening, and uh, we'll see you next time, maybe sometime this week. All right, take care.